everybody. I'm Jarrett Reddick. And this is a podcast. Jarrett goes to the movies. Hopefully you have seen or heard one of my many musical endeavors. And if you have, then you know how much I love movies. This is movie commentary with no movie knowledge. This podcast is me and my friend Rich talking about movies that we like. But my name's on it because I'm famous. This is Jarrett goes to the movies. Still. Okay, we're starting now. Oh my god. This is the theme song. Oh man, you did it, Rich. You did it. You did it. This week's movie is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. And uh, as you heard, the updated theme song by Katy Perry. <laughs> Big hit in 2000. I have the real theme song. Do you want to hear the real theme big, song? Th- big Just a hit in 2014, I believe, right? It's about, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so topical, yeah. right? Totally, 100%. <laughs> Music is so freaking great and recognizable. And yeah. what's cool is, uh, Casey and I watched this with Jack, who is our uh, nine-year-old. This time? This time. Oh, cool. And he watched. He watched the whole thing. He never took a break to go get a Nerf gun and shoot one of us. or awesome. uh, you know. And that, that means- Did he that, cry whistle at the end? He, there was no cry whistle. Um, no, I, I broke up, but I, 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 I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go into that yet. I mean, but um, so it did. But here's the thing. Um, Jack heard that song kind of come into that part. And he goes, Dad, they stole this from Star Wars. <laughs> right. And I just go, no, man, that's just how good this guy is because he. this is the guy who did the Star Wars thing. It's just he knows how to make you feel that well, way. Well, I mean, there's certain movies that have that style of orchestration in the theme songs. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot. Cause well, we've talked about that and how that's kind of a, of a dead thing. It doesn't it does, really happen anymore. Someone who doesn't know that, Hey, other movies have orchestration other than Star Wars. I think the cool thing about Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Jaws, E.T., those movies like that is Jurassic Park was yeah. is kind of like, uh, I mean, I remember that one coming out in the, and that was in the 90s. And, you know, right. it had that anthemic thing. It's cool that you hear those songs well, in an elevator and you know the movie. All the movies he's seen have bands like your band doing the theme song. Sure, yeah. And that's very popular now. And the, the orchestration type thing aren't. So when he hears Star Wars, he's like, oh, that's the Star Wars. So if he hears that type of music in any other movie, you know, he's going to go, oh, that's the Star Wars theme. Because normally it's some pop song that's that's the theme or something. E.T. may be my favorite. E.T. may be, E.T. May be the one that evokes the correct emotion just so amazingly Raiders is for me Raiders is and that one's a good one too I don't I don't disagree uh, with that I think it's it's a hard it's that's a tough one I feel like and you know Star Wars is great as well I mean that you and I went and saw the new Star Wars and just hearing that there's so many good ones yeah. in Star Wars I mean they, yeah. they each have the, the the Luke theme the Darth Vader theme they mm-hmm. all have their own themes like dun 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 sure dun, dun. I mean that's mm-hmm. that's amazing yeah that's it's good. amazing that's like their hail to the but chief. like the the Raiders theme is so uplifting mm-hmm. and so like Fucking let's go, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. like Jaws. So yeah. uplifting. <laughs> uh, welcome to Jarrett Goes to the Movies. It is our first <laughs> podcast oh of 2016, and it's good to be back. My name is Jarrett. With me, as always, is Rich. Hello. And my lovely lady, Casey. Hello. No, you're not mine, you know, like as in... Like, no, we, definitely not. We've been watching a lot of Game of Thrones. It's not on TV right now. How are you watching? We're catching up. We're on season <clears throat> three, and you know, oh. apparently... My lady. Apparently, your dad just tells you to marry people, and you just get married. Yeah. You know? Just That's not happens. what happened with us. No. At all. That thing. No, yeah, not at the all. opposite. Yeah, yeah, the exact opposite. Pretty much. Do not, whatever yeah, you do, end marry up with this guy. this guy, and here we are. And then she sent him a picture of balls. I yeah, did, that's I did true. send a picture of yeah. balls one that's time. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that did happen. That did happen. <laughs> you, won, you won her dad over with a picture of your balls. Of my balls, yeah. Well, I sent it from his phone. <laughs> See? To my dad. Yeah. He's like, any dude that sends me a picture of his fucking balls has got to be a good guy. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope everybody had a great holiday season. It is awesome to be back. It's it's weird taking a week off, so it's going to be strange the next couple of months where we have, have uh, Casey and I have a vacation coming up and then Bowling for Soup tour 
Uh, that's going to kind of keep us from uh, from doing this every week. But we will have episodes every week because we are committed <laughs> to 52 fucking episodes a year. <laughs> 52 a year. That's right. It's happening. Rain, sleet, sleet or snow, what are, oh, whatever. E.T., a troubled child, summons the courage to help a friendly alien escape Earth and return to his home world. I don't really know why he's a troubled child. I, I mean, yeah, that's the first thing I thought. I was like, why is he troubled? His parents were divorced. His parents are sad. getting divorced, and obviously, there's that kind of thing going on, and they're he trying to figure that. Penis breath, well, though. that is in, uh, one of the greatest quotes of all time. Maybe it was an iguana. It was no iguana. Maybe a. Uh, you know how they say there are uh, alligators in the sewers? Alligators in the sewers. <laughs> all we're trying to say is. Maybe you just probably imagined it. I couldn't have imagined it. Maybe it was a pervert or deformed kid or something. A deformed kid. Maybe uh, an elf or a leprechaun. It was nothing like that, penis breath. (laughs) Nailed it. (laughs) Sit down. There's so many funny things about that exchange. The Drew Barrymore character being just like the, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know. She was on coke, though, the whole time. Uh, yeah right she was four so this movie has that big brother little brother thing do you love your brother it I've has never waited it for that. it <laughs> has it. And it but it also has the Goonies little brother thing yeah. where no older brother in this situation is ever going to listen to the little brother it's maybe shut unless up. he sees no, the alien no no because he was a pretty much a dickhead there's until no he saw fucking way ET. that kid it's isn't going friends. and getting to see Thomas Howell to come over and look at it right away like right <laughs> Even with the most excellent swear ever. Yeah. No way. That said... See Thomas Howell's first movie, by the way. Is that true? Yeah, but I think you... um, during this conversation, because he is being serious, he's like, hey, there's the alligators that get... You know, there right. he's kind of not fucking with him yet. Right. And he's, you know, just more trying to get him through the thing. And then... Uh, Man, see, you didn't have an older brother. I said mm. mean shit to my mom a couple of times in, in front of my brother, and like most of the time he didn't give a shit, but every once in a while he would make it worse. Right. Uh, my brother, know, too. You know, just by, you know, like, are you fucking serious, you little shit? You're dead. Like, you're dead. <laughs> I heard that a lot. You know, I heard I just that. love that whenever he calls him penis breath, that like, the mom has this immediate conflict about like, hi, yeah, that's yeah exactly, yeah. But I'm a mom, like, right? Because we deal like, with that daily, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're right. I think that that reaction is is priceless. Just just the the laughing at it and, and just being like, okay, stop. It makes you wonder if that if she knew he was gonna say it. <laughs> right. You guys made Virgin Margaritas in we his did. birthday party. Yeah, she re- <laughs> she requested that, <laughs> which opened the doors for Jack and his friend to say Virgin like a thousand oh, yeah. times. Oh, uh, right. That's that's where that came from. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's... You're a virgin. You're a virgin. He pointed at me. You're a virgin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had no idea what they're yeah, talking Yeah, well, obviously, they're talking to I you. I was telling Rich about my mom was in... At summer camp, she was like 10 with her little brother, maybe nine. This boy, this older kid, was like, I bet you're a virgin to my mom. Well, Darren steps in to defend her and just goes, she is not. She's 10 years old. Yeah. And that's what it reminded me of. You know, like that's the mentality these kids have walking around saying virgin right now. So let's Hilarious. talk about the opening scene. A pretty long opening scene with no yeah. dialogue, no yeah, faces. Yeah, nothing to do a clip off of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just sort of some. I love the keys. The key I love thing, the way they did the key thing. I, I liked it. It bothered me that they kind of switched sides a few times. Like, it, like, okay, is it not the same guy? All the, like, you know, I think what that was supposed to do is introduce that character that we wouldn't see his face until the end. Right, with the keys. which was weird because they actually kind of did show his face briefly in one of the scenes, and I was like, oh, why did you show the face? I can, I can tell that's Peter Coyote. Yeah, but I, I a di- you're talking a about when he's kicking the ground and he's, uh, he's, it's, it's from when uh, Elliot's. No, leave- no, no, yeah. no. Well, then too, but it was early on. They were getting out of the jeeps and they were coming. I could see him, and I go, "Oh, that's you." That's, can see the silhouette of his face. Yeah, that's Peter yeah Coyote. I could see his face. Like at the same time, you yeah. were like, "Oh, I forgot about that guy." That's exactly right. Yeah. I did, and I said, "Yeah, yeah I, I wish they had shown it." it. Right. I wish it was more like Marty McFly coming in the, in that opening scene where you didn't see, see him at the all. top half of him at yeah. all, <clears> and they were just showing the keys and just showing them running around. I think that would have been better. But I loved the opening scene. I thought yeah. the opening scene was cool. This was eighty two. Eighty two. I don't remember when I saw it i 
probably saw it on my hookup and swap VHS oh, tapes that's right. from my yes, parents. Yes, the three VCRs. Yeah, that's yeah. probably how I saw. It. That's how I saw most films. You realize that your your parents were pirates. Yeah, you, that, they were. that was highly illegal. Right. And like kids, we used to think we were going to get arrested for shit like that. We just thought they knew <laughs> about what. You know, like when you'd hook two VCRs up together and record the one to the other, and even like cassette tapes, you weren't supposed to do that. It was I don't the, know. I'm uh, the Napster generation. We did go to jail. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And made it to where I have to work for the rest of my life. So thanks thanks for that as well. Well, I'm not happy about it anymore. <laughs> um first time I saw it, um easy. It's this is a big one for us. Um my brother was out with friends that day and we were all supposed to go to a movie that night. I wanted to see something, my dad wanted to see something, and my brother had went to see E. T. that day. Mm-hmm. And he's just begging and begging and begging. So at the time he would have been, so I was 10, so he's 15. He didn't really ever care about anything. And he would just sort of like whiny, like, I want to see E.T. again. Like, you got to see it. You guys aren't going to believe this. We didn't know anything about it. I mean, like, you know, you, you got to think, again, you had three TV channels. So weren't really a lot of movie previews on all the time. Yeah, no. You weren't like uh-huh. overexposed unless you were seeing it while watching another movie. So I, I don't remember ever hearing anything about it. Right. And so we went to see it that night. My, my mom, my dad, my brother and me. And so I'm sitting there kind of blind, not knowing what I'm going to look at. And I love that, by the way. So what's that? Going in blind, going in, knowing nothing about the movie. Yeah, I like that too. And and it, so it, it happens very seldom. Yeah. I mean, it happens. The only time it really happens in, in adulthood is when a friend is like, you got to see this movie and you've never heard of it. And I only have but, really one example of that, of just walking into a theater, not even knowing, not even even heard of the name of the movie, which yeah. was Outbreak with Dustin Hoffman and oh, um, sure. Renee Russo. Yeah. Uh, with the whole monkey thing, and they had the disease. Yeah. My first wife at the time, we were just trying to kill some time or something. We walked in and just watched it, and I was like, "This is fucking awesome! This movie. How come I haven't heard anything about this?" Yeah. You know, I mean, it was a good movie. It wasn't an amazing, but it was it was really good. And I attribute a lot of how much I felt about it was because I just was a hundred percent fresh. Didn't know anything about it. Same here. So that is my experience with ET, which is a great movie for that to have happened to you. Right. And I've got there's a couple stand, yeah, by, it stand by me any was the, the same magic. way. Yeah, nothing's gone. So going back to that first scene, which is pretty long again, with no dialogue, no faces, and just sort of like these guys run around the forest and they scream and right. you know, like is this going to be scary? What the hell is <laughs> about to happen? You know, and then you're exposed to the whole glowing heart thing, and then they leave him, and you don't know if you're supposed to feel bad, and you know all of that. So. Did you, when you were a kid, view the adults as being evil? The scientists, I guess, as being bad guys. They were the bad guys. Way more than I did this time seeing it. Right. I don't remember. See, that's a great question because looking at it again now, I don't remember him you know, being so supportive of what it was that Elliot had done. And even the... Yeah, they were good guys. The doctors and stuff trying to keep him alive right. and all of that stuff. I know, did that, not that, see it like that. I didn't I, see it like that I at thought all. they were bad. The kids got to get out of there. They and really actually, were, if they had just cooperated, we'd probably know a lot more about the aliens. That everything would have been fine. They're just trying to help him too. I mean... to go home, Rich. It would have got to poking and prodding. And I think that's, that's I don't the key think so. here. I, think, I just don't think they wanted to sell it like I that. Think, in have you seen story. Close Encounters with Turkey? You haven't seen Close no. Encounters. No, I think no. it would be more like that, where it's like, hey, we're just trying to communicate. And if they took right. off and never came back ever again, well, shit, that sucks. But yeah, don't. I don't think they would steal the E.T. and keep him from going. I mean, they were trying to keep him alive. And even the guy with the keys was trying to help him get home. But, you know, it was not as an exciting of a movie. If or the was kids trying to escape. he was trying to figure out, you know, what is this communication device? Where is he communicating to? Like, Well, they just wanted to know. They more. wanted, they to, wanted know to learn. Was they didn't I, want to, like, kill anybody or, like... I don't know. Devious. If I was like an alien on another planet and they were like, don't worry, you can go home. But first, we're going to do a bunch of tests on you and poke at you and stuff. I'd still probably consider them bad guys. Well, I'm sure they'd probably try to talk him into, hey, stick around. They're we want to learn in, more. They're right. talking him into it. He just they're had just, to like, do that finger coffee, thing. Like, Here, hang on. Put this in the speaking spell. We yeah, wanna- <laughs> do this. Um, so back to that uh, the first scene with Elliot and his brother's friends and, and the mom coming in. Uh, Reminded me a lot of my brother and his friends. They were always kind of the they were around playing the table. Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons right? and Dra- I think. I mean, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they were playing, but it was supposed to be that kind of game. Right. But I was definitely always that little kid that just wanted to be included. Did you ever play Dungeons they, and Dragons? I did. As a kid? Yeah, I did. I, like we never, for real? We never played it right. Yeah. No. No. 
no, no, same here. Yeah. So I'm, we would make all the characters. We'd sit around. We'd roll the dice, make our characters, yes. fill out all the stuff. Exactly. And then we wouldn't do anything because we don't know what to do. Same after that. exact fucking thing. <laughs> and then we'd just make up characters. And then all of a sudden, I've got like a character that's got nine hundred hit points yeah, or it's whatever. Like, but it doesn't and matter because like, you don't know how to play. Because nobody knows how to hit him. <laughs> and I then it's just like you know, like I've got this guy and he is stronger than your guy. And like, how did that happen? Well, we played last night and so and so was dungeon master. Ask Brett Thompson. I am not cheating. <laughs> I worked at a bookstore all through high school and it was directly next to this place called the Game Exchange. I think I assumed it was a video game place until all the people started wandering around in their cloaks and gear and stuff. And it was <laughs> all yeah, Dungeons and Dragons and magic cards. And, you know, I was the bookstore girl. So anyway, I made friends with all these people and they invited me over there and they tried to teach me. I didn't have any of the focus, but I I, I don't even think I could ever comprehend. You actually have a great story, though, that, that stems from this because everybody has a picture of those dudes right now. Yeah, which they uh, weren't. No, they're no, not. no, no. But yeah. they, okay, they but they were the nerdy guys. Yeah, they, was they were at cute. The, they worked at the at the game stop and they played Dungeons and Dragons and did all this stuff and whatever. And they invite you to a party. Oh yeah, and you okay. and you go almost being like, okay, I'll stop by. I was, I was such a dick. I was like, I'll make your nights, nerds. I, exactly, and it sounds so <laughs> shit. They were so so nice. Someone's like, yeah, we're having a birthday party. You should come over. You know, we might have a drink. Mind you, we're in high school, so like saying like have a drink means there's gonna be beer. Please come. So I'm like, oh, I don't really want to go. I bet they'd really appreciate if I did. You know? <laughs> oh my god, what so, a dick! You know, I wasn't literally just I couldn't help it. Just what I thought. I'm like, I don't want to be an asshole. I'm gonna see him tomorrow. And so I'm like, all right, I guess I'll go. So I bring my friend. We go to this party we're like we'll just stop by for a minute say hi fucking craziest party i've ever been to hands down at that <laughs> yeah. point in my life that I, I don't i don't think they knew what kind of alcohol to buy so they bought all of the alcohol yeah. oh there's like God. naked people running around everybody's just like <laughs> fucking in bathrooms those it's kids crazy. fucking saw revenge of the nerds and Hell decided yeah. to live it <laughs> so uh, so from that point on like you know they'd be like oh we're having this new year's eve party we're going on a boat and i'm like oh i've got this other party to go to and i always went to their parties <laughs> yeah always. they're on a boat yeah. No, not them. The other people. I would yeah. blow off I'm every party boat, to go to their fucker. parties. Well, so that was the way that it was around my house. Like, you know, followed my brother's friends on their bikes and they, you know, were always faster and I always wanted to participate on that. So it was very, very much one of those like, oh, this is this seems like actual life to me. I will point out a problem that I have really early on with the movie that is still to this day driving me fucking crazy is they send Elliot out to get the pizza and he goes out to get the pizza which had obviously already been ordered and the fucking yes. black headed kid is like make sure plenty We've of got, pepperoni yeah. and extra whatever and <laughs> no like, little fishies yeah and no little fishies it's just like you motherfuckers ordered this don't send him out and, I caught that too oh it drove no me not, it's still I've been thinking about it like how did they not <laughs> fucking catch that and maybe that was a California thing or something but regardless it, that drove me fucking Fucking crazy. What I thought that was funny was like, no okay, sense. there's five boys, yeah, and they bring in one pizza. Yeah, we can't freaking feed our yeah. three year old one pizza. <laughs> like, but that no, was the thing. You were myself. right though. You were right that that used to be the thing. You, yeah, you ordered you a, a large pizza. pizza for the family, and everybody had a piece of pizza. Not anymore. And now no. we all eat a fucking half a pizza. Yeah, seriously. When it comes in, you I, know? I order like three pizzas. <laughs> yeah, when, dude. When the kids, there. my kids, uh, eat a half a medium pizza each. Yeah, you know. It's that's just the way it is, but you know, you used to just order a yeah. Pizza. I mean, do you ever like go to pizzeria places and they sell it by the slice? Yeah, and I never go because I'm like one slice. <laughs> you know, if you're in New York and you're going to you get, get pizza, two slices, every TV show I've ever seen, it's like you just get a slice. Coke they and sell a slice it by is the a slice. Thing. Yeah. Know, me and Jared there's never a <laughs> two slice deal. There's yeah, never there's that. always a two slice deal. Is there two slice and a Coke? Whatever. Me yeah. and Jarrett went. We on- can't even hold that. We went to New York. We went and saw this show. Then we get out. We've had drinks. And I'm like, I want to ride the like pedicab somewhere. And he's like, no. And I'm like, let's do it. I'm taking selfies with this bike man. And he's like, take us to the best pizza in New York, which, of course, is the most touristy thing ever. He just drives in a circle 12 times, drops us off where we're at this restaurant. And right. we go in there. And we definitely didn't have, we, I mean, we definitely ate like a whole pizza each. No, no, no. We ate calzones. Giant we ate, calzones. We ate huge calzones. But the thing was, is that when we got up there, we almost bailed out because it was like, we're like, this isn't what we considered a New York pizza. I mean, like, we wanted I, to I, go I, grab like a slice. Yeah, we that's what we wanted. But it was like a sit down place. And by the time it got there and we started eating, we're like, this is the fucking best thing we've ever had. Then we just ever. woke up with pizza sauce everywhere. And I went to Chicago. That was it. 
And we, it was from for some conference. It was a bunch of salespeople. We all went out, went to Uno's in Chicago. Yeah. Because we heard that's the best pizza ever, ever, right? Right. We went there, ordered the pizza. We got the pizza. And the sauce was like water. It was mm, runny. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, what is that? We what complained Uno? about it. And the waitress chewed our ass out saying we didn't know what the fuck we were talking about. This is, it's how it's supposed to be. And, and Go fuck see, yourself. It's fuck you. good. Yeah. <laughs> You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh my god, it was the worst. Part of me wonders ever. if she's right. Chicago pizza and is when I say just watery. Like a deep I mean dish. like watery compared to Papa John's. Okay, then yeah, you were fucking wrong. Yeah, it's supposed to be light. It's a light sauce. It's, no, no, pizza. it was gross. No, I mean it's, it's like a lighter a, thing. It's like this heavy, pasty, sweet. What okay. on Papa John's? No, on like good Chicago, pizza. but Chicago style is a deep dish. Like it's like a fucking lasagna on crust. Almost. Gross. It's like, like it's it's a completely different thing. Let's I digress. Pizza isn't important here other than <laughs> the fact that I don't understand Pizza after he dropped the important. thing and they fucking like it wasn't ruined. You can still eat that. That right. could have been salvaged. Yeah, one little tiny foot ruined the whole thing. Yeah, yeah right. fuck that. You could eat a stepped on I pizza. Left it I've outside. done it before. Yeah, I didn't I've, get that either. I'll do it again. I don't fucking you care about that, that shit. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, though, about this. Here's the thing. I get the pizza and I'm going back inside and I fucking hear a noise in the backyard. Nope. I am running inside. Fuck yeah. First thing. Oh yeah. You get the willies up your neck fuck and you fucking and hightail get the it inside. fuck out of there. I don't drop the pizza, yeah. first of all. Oh, it I might be, totally make it inside. It might be a coyote. Oh, let me go in there and check to see well, if thought, it's a no, coyote. No, he thought it was right. his dog who was missing. Uh, no, the dog wasn't missing, though. I thought that had come up. No, no, no. He wasn't missing. He was just, I think he's kind of in and out. Okay, so if your dog was running around and you heard something, you'd probably be like, oh, it's my dog. That's what he did at first. Yeah. When he realized it wasn't, they threw a ball. Then he took off. But yeah. I definitely wouldn't yeah, go sit you say outside. Here, boy. And then when here, boy didn't work. You... Yeah, from the fence. <laughs> right. Yeah, from the fence. I'm like, <laughs> you know, nothing. Oh, here, nothing. Boy. I'm nope. getting the fuck out. out of here. I'm out. Yeah, exactly. Did, I'm did, he remained did the dog calm turn the light on in the shed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened here? <laughs> and they live by a forest. Even sleeping outside is that's not happening. Yeah. No. Pass. No. 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 Not happening. No. No. Never. Not <laughs> happening. There's alligators around there. Yeah, supposedly they stand up. I remember this as a kid. You know, I'd never heard of Reese's Pieces in my life, ever. Right. And then they fucking put them in this movie, and it was everywhere. Right. It was supposed to be m and Yeah, because that's what it was in the book. We lures him out. Lures with the him out with the Reese's Pieces. He gets mm-hmm. him into the house. And then... You know, I think a lot of the the sweetness and the comedy starts to kick in. You know, you get. I think they developed the relationship between the two of them pretty did, pretty well. Did you know that there was a an actual dude that had no legs in that suit? I think I've heard that before. Yeah, so he was standing. He, his the legs of ET were the guy's arms, oh. and so he's his arms were in there with his palms down, and the, he that's how he walked normally. He had no legs whatsoever. So his arms were went past his torso, past his butt, basically. Right. And that's how he normally walked, and he got around. And so when you see E.T. like doom, 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 walking around, that's right. that guy in the suit that's walking weird. with his arms. It's the reason they can't show him running. Well, you yeah, the running. Run, you can't run on your hands. The running tripped me up. Yeah, because he's super fast. Yeah, like super fast. Yeah. And then how do you? And then he can't walk up a fucking ramp. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's like at the end they they're like showing him walk up the ramp, and I'm like, surely they're not going to show him walk up the ramp. And they do give you a couple of shots yeah. of him walking up the ramp, but it's like that would have taken 45 minutes oh for God. that little guy to get up the goddamn ramp. <laughs> I mean, just everything. It just doesn't make any sense no. that you can run that fast, but when you're not running, it takes you 15 minutes to get across a room. Okay, you're hot. I'll be back. So what movie did this remind you of? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The first thing I thought of was like, yeah. this is the scene from Ferris Bueller's yeah, Day Off. Yeah, same Hall. kind of thing. Same exact thing. Yeah. Right? Did he do the light bulb thing? I think he Ferris? did do the light bulb. I can't remember. Unless I'm projecting that onto Ferris. Because I, I thought the same thing when he did the light bulb thing. Light bulb thing. I want. I I thought the exact same thing. The like, main thing I remember is Bueller the clammy thing? hands. He licked his palms to have clammy hands. Well, and I thought the heating pad on the face was genius by Elliot. Actually, I don't remember that being a Ferris Bueller no. thing or not anything. No, I don't think so. And it does. I mean that. That, that is like, I'm going to fill your head. You're going to feel warm. You fucking got me. You were outside last night waiting for that thing to come back, weren't you? Couldn't live if I go to work. Okay. No TV. See, that gets me too. You're always uh, allowed to watch TV when you're sick. That's the whole thing. That's when you catch up on Young and the Restless and Price is Right. <laughs> right. 
It was very important Another aspect world. of getting well yesterday. as a kid. Another world in days of our lives. That's, that is a whole thing. <laughs> Do you have a thing for the mom? No. No? Did you have a thing for the mom? I no. did when I was a kid, for sure. Short hair. No, you don't like that. I don't that. even know what which mom that would have been. Then. You know, she was, and she's That's... on a bunch of stuff. She was in Cujo as well. And they, they quote her saying she never wants to see another Pinto as long as she Oh, lives. that is Cujo. Yeah, it's Cujo. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know they made a movie out of Cujo. I read the book. I never knew they even made a movie. Cujo? That's Fletch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you talk? You know, talk? Me, human. Mm. Boy. Mm. Elliot. Elliot. <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> Coke. See, we drink it. It's a, uh, it's a drink. You know, food. These are toys. These are little men. This is Greedo. And then this is Hammerhead. See, this is Walrus Man. And then this is Snaggletooth. And this is Lando Calrissian. See? And this is Boba Fett. I like the stuff in his room. I thought that was cool. That was a nice little flashback. Remember the this little fake spilled Coke can? Right. Um, that everybody had, and then you know the X-wing fighter on the fishing stream. Had all the cool toys. Everybody, yeah, all yeah. that stuff, and and all of it displayed very properly. He's a terrible teacher. Terrible oh. teacher. No, but it's so cute. I feel this like is watching, Greedo. No, I feel like watching this as an adult. When I was younger, he didn't seem much older than I was, and now that I'm an adult, I look back, and this is exactly how a child that age would be teaching a kid. I don't disagree. An alien, but thing, he's I a think terrible it, teacher. Oh, did it's you, so cute. Did Did you have a flashback though to us talking about the Star Wars toys? Oh and yeah, he, he fucking got roped yeah. in and bought all the ones that <laughs> right. really aren't even in the movie for right. more than a second. But he bought them all. And Michael, he came back. Came back. He came. Back. Oh my God! Thing. Love the uh, the the door thing. <laughs> you used to do that all the time. Yeah. That yes. Was, that was huge. I actually am not familiar with that move. I thought it was cool. really. Yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. But when once you saw it, you're like, why didn't I ever do that? I guess so. My bro- older brother wasn't like creative, imaginative. <laughs> Holy so. shit! My brother was a fucking maniac. <laughs> my brother could booby trap my room. This is no shit. I'm not Damn joking. Damn. Oh my god! I'm not fucking kidding. He had the one, this one trick where he could somehow rig a Ziploc bag of water, and I would walk into my room, and it would fall on my head. See, I was like more of the like bucket on the door of stuff person because I'd see it on TV. Like my cousin Jacob helping me. So one day I walk into my room, <coughs> and he has somehow rigged a line that went around every single thing on every single shelf, <laughs> and just by me opening the door. Everything fucking fell off the shelf. Oh my god! But here's the thing: one of those things was a bingo ball. So the little marbles fell out of the bingo ball thing. You know, you roll the ball, and the oh, little one, yeah, co- yeah. oh, seventy-eight, whatever. So those things fell and bounced and fell and bounced for what seemed like two and a half hours. <laughs> That is amazing. It was fucking terrible. <laughs> Dennis used to horrible. And this is why you have anxiety. <laughs> Maybe I, I couldn't serious. fucking walk into my room without. I mean, I always thought something was gonna. Yeah, happen. You're like Inspector Clouseau on the Pink Panther. My brother amazing. was so good at fucking everything. <laughs> my brother somehow fucking rigged a tape recorder under my bed and got me and Brett Thompson touching dicks in the first grade. The full conversation. Oh, like, no. I'm going to show you mine. You show me yours. Like, you, should we let them touch? <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, let's let them touch. Why would you let them touch? That's I the don't break. get it. What do you mean? First Why break. are you touching? You were in a frat. You've touched dicks. No, never. Yes. He was in a bo- Jared has this weird mentality that being in a band on a tour bus is like being in a fraternity, and that's why he's put balls in his mouth. Yeah, I've you just to, touch a lot of dicks. I've tried to explain to him that. But why Fraternities would you don't touch put balls them? I don't in their understand. Mouths. What like what's going through your head that goes, yes, we should touch these. Yeah, what else you thing? Do with yeah, them? Yeah, it's what else? Like it's been it's been there. Not it's, a thing. You know, there's not it's a lot so else you can do with it. Thing. Dennis <laughs> used to. That's amazing. This is nowhere close to that. It just reminded me of it. But his brother was ten years older, so they did the basics: fart in his pillow, you know, things right. like that. But he they used to tie all the sleeves together. 
in his closet of all of his clothes. Whenever he'd yank down a shirt, all of them would fall. <laughs> oh, man. I think that's why you have anxiety. I'm telling you. It could be. We could because blame him. You you know what I'm talking about when I mentioned the Pink Panther, right? No. Inspe- okay, the Pink Panther movies. Yeah. Inspector Clouseau. Yeah. Every single time he comes home, yeah. he has a butler that works there. Yeah. And the butler is also like this ninja karate guy. Yeah. He tells the ninja karate butler guy to attack me to keep me on my toes. Oh, okay. And so every time he comes home, you know, he's in the house somewhere. Yeah. And then there, and then you see sort of where the ninja's hiding. And then he, he just and comes he from somewhere. Like, yeah. And he has to like defend himself defend, from yeah. the butler ninja karate totally. guy. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That was your pretty entire much, childhood. That's my entire childhood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. My brother once. That would drive me bonkers. My brother once uh, got mad at me. I was in about the second grade. He stripped me down naked and threw me out the front door and locked the door. And oh, everybody had that happen. To there I me. was, out there naked, just naked and shit. You know, and I I see the YouTube videos where, where there's all these practical jokes, and I go, wow, that seems like fun. I should do that to someone. But I always think, but they're gonna do it back to yeah, me. Exactly. And I don't want to live in a world like that. And I'm a jumpy guy. <laughs> I am. I'm an easy guy to scare, even if you're not trying. I will walk in the door, <clears throat> and I'll go. Jared, I'm home, 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 home. I'm coming in the room. I'm here. And he'll be in like the bathroom. I'm walking in the bathroom. I'll walk in the door and he'll be like, oh my God, you scared the shit out of me. Yeah. It does happen. Well, Jack will every once in a while sneak up on me or do the thing where he hides behind it. And I'm just like, you know, the thing is, is that one day I'm going to do this to you and you're going to cry. You're going to cry. He would. Cry. Yeah. So just remember while you're crying. There's nothing I can do to help you. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> my cousin Rachel, she's still like traumatized. She's laying in bed. And my cousin Jacob, who knows where he is, and she's laying there. Says, this house is 100 years old. It makes all kinds of noises. Mm-hmm. It's all fucked up, right? Tiny town. I just showed Jarrett this town. It's all crooked and decrepit and horrible. And she's laying there. And she hears some like scratching on the wall. And she's like, what the fuck? She's like six, right? She lays her again. She's a big old pansy, too. She's always trying to sleep in her mom's room. She hears it again. So she does that thing when you're little and you know you need to run from your bed to your door. So you had to like count to three in your head. Did you right. ever do that? That's how I always had to do. If I freak myself out, I had to like one, two, three, go, right? That's so, Lost. Yeah. I just she, stole that from Lost. I've never seen Lost. That's what Jack told Kate. I fuck. That's what people do. I've never seen <laughs> Lost. I don't even know who Jack or Kate is. So she goes one, two, three, jumps off her bed. He fucking grabs her by the ankles, pulls her oh, under. She, oh I mean, my God. he committed. He was there for like thirty five minutes, fucking doing this shit to her until oh she jumped God. off the bed. And she, he even still to this day was like. Uh, hindsight, not funny. She was like <laughs> shaking. She's still all messed up from it. So let's talk about the Henry Thomas, the uh, Elliot character. I mean, obviously perfect for that movie. Kind of then fell off the face of the earth for a while. Um, but did has done a few things later in his career that were good. He was on Legends of the Fall, Gangs of New York. I guess it was a friend of mine from high school. Oh, maybe it was Kim. She said that he, he lived in A&M or was going to A&M or something. Oh, that's right. It was her. Her boyfriend at the time used to call him out as being the guy from E.T. every time he would come in the store. And he apparently hated it. He hated being recognized. He hated being acknowledged as the guy from E.T. And he used to get pissed off, like frustrated. He went to Blinn College in Brenham, Texas. Yeah, Blinn College is the uh, community college for A&M. Oh, okay. Okay, well, that makes sense. And so he would, every single time he'd come there to get groceries, the guy would call him out and say, hey, it's the guy from E.T. And he'd get so pissed off. I'm sure, yeah. (laughs) And he finally just stopped coming. So, obviously, we talked about Peter Coyote. Most interesting thing in looking at the cat. Your favorite, Deborah Winger, is Ugh. actually in this movie. She's in every fucking movie as the <laughs> alternate. Every she's, fucking one. She's the nurse zombie carrying poodle. So I'm assuming she's dressed up during Halloween oh, when they're okay. doing the thing or whatever, and she's uncredited, but that's just crazy. She's your favorite. Ugh, you love her. I cannot stand her. It's, you love her. It's less her, you love her so physical much. attributes and more her voice that drives me fucking bonkers. You don't like it. She just seems like she's been smoking cigarettes since she was four years old. And then, of course, there's Drew Barrymore. I mean, this was a huge movie for her. Obviously, just the cutest thing ever. And, um, you know, went on to do a few other things, but... Really not what made her famous. I, I just mean, can't wait. I can't stand the way she says like her S's and stuff. Um, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> I'm 
just give me kidding. Don't get I me just said that because that's how started. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a big fan. I will say that I hate her. I I, I don't really get it. I will say this: she's uh, so a terrible actress. The thing, the, so this is what I learned on Howard Stern the other day, though. They, he finally interviewed Adam Sandler, and Adam was on for like two hours and fifteen minutes. And one of the big topics was Drew Barrymore, and you know, to, I mean, full on career in the toilet, like not doing well, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, working in a coffee shop in L.A. I think right. just to pass the time, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And approached Adam Sandler and was like, hey, I think we could do a movie together. And he's just like, okay, you know, I think maybe we could. Anyway, so they do The Wedding Singer, and it's obviously like a huge, huge hit. And since Not then, because they, of her, because she's horrible. Not Well, I mean, I think they just have a good chemistry. I think they do, you know? I mean, I, and I, 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 they I'll, really do. I'll be honest. I haven't seen the 100 First Dates. I've never 50 seen that. First Dates was good. 50, but it was I good didn't despite blended. her. Wedding singer, good despite her. No, you're wrong. I think no, no, I think she was a great character in that, and I think she played it well. And and, and all I that. love her weird s's. She, uh, of course you do. <laughs> her weird s's are awesome when they're coming out of your mouth. <laughs> but she is a terrible actress. She's just a bad actress. I don't know how anyone can watch her movie and not say mm, bad acting. I thought she was good in. Riding in Cars with Boys. Did you see that one? Uh, that was a good mm-hmm. one. Now, I saw all the ones when she was little. The uh, Firestarter and Irreconcilable Differences. The little I don't have a problem with because she's a kid actor. Fine. Yeah. But you're an adult actor. You've got the money to take acting lessons and you're not. It's bad. Why? She doesn't need to. She gets all the roles. She makes the money. And well, she's in Maybelline. She needs yeah, to, to impress say, me yeah. and make me fine. say or she's a good girl. actor. Cover girl, yeah. Yeah, she's fine. I wouldn't take any lessons. I'd do what I'm doing, make my millions, and go I, home. And be- I don't okay. disagree with you, though. I, I don't. I, I, she pretty much drives me fucking bananas yeah. as well. I, I don't really get it. I, for Great. Sure. You get roles. Proud of you. Awesome. But yeah. if you're not getting a, a fucking Academy Award anytime soon, holy Unless shit. Unless it's an award and blowing Tom Green. I mean, thing, even Adam yeah, Sandler. Yeah, she was Tom Green's girlfriend when he had oh, the testicle surgery, thing, yeah. actually. And then, uh, and she, uh, she did some shit. What did she do on David Letterman? Did she flash him her yeah, boobs? Yeah, that was when she was her her resurgent. Yeah, that's a coming. good move. That's a good move. Were they good boobs? And which we didn't well, get no, to see. Yeah, yeah. Are they on the internet? She did. I doubt um, good. She. I mean, she did a scary movie, right? Or not scary movie? She was. Her name was Casey in in a Scream. Scream. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. And um, that movie scared the shit out of me. Me too. How old was I when that came out? Do y'all know? No. Do you know when it came out? No. Like had it like nineties. You tell us. Yeah, you tell us. I don't know. I mean, I'm Either thinking way, my, late nineties. My aunt. So I, I'm. I mean. I'm probably eight or nine. My Aunt Pam dropped me and my older cousins off at the movie theater and just bought us tickets and sent us on our 96. way. 96. 96. And I was freaking five or six and I saw it in theaters. It was terrifying. I was wow. already in Bowling for Soup and we were touring and we stopped at uh, our manager, Jeff Rose, grandmother's house and she was out of town and she lived in the mid- uh, right on uh, Lake Huron up in Michigan. So it the house sat in the middle of a forest and it was dark and we put that movie on like idiots and it scared the shit out of me i'm not a big scary movie guy anyway i'm not either you know so it's, i don't get scared I, I think they're funny i don't they make not me when laugh you're six well no when you're six sure or 26 <laughs> i always forget that whenever you google a celebrity boobs everybody just photoshops gross porn yeah. pictures with them <laughs> getting like cum all over their face <laughs> and penises nice. in their butts <laughs> Anyway, so I don't know what her boobs look like, but if I did, I would show you. Ugh, yeah, these are bad. Oh, yeah, that's Drew Barrymore's boobs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Why don't you put the safe search on? Jesus Christ. Is that a thing? Yes. That's you just go boring. Drew Barrymore nude, and it'll come up. Ugh, I bet it won't. It will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see? There they are. Oh, my God, there's so much cum. <laughs> Jesus. Holy shit. How did they get the cum <laughs> on her actual face? That's hilarious. <laughs> that is so much. <laughs> That's not just one guy. Okay, what either, was the man? search? That's... Everyone, everyone's gonna want to know now. What was that's the search Drew term? Bar- that's Drew Barrymore nude. It usually oh works for God. me. I don't know. Maybe I spell nude. No, wrong No, I think or something. you're just looking at the wrong she's, boobs. She's. I don't know. I, I think I'm looking at the right ones. Titty, I don't need to see that much come. come all over her. Face. I was like, this one. This is Drew Barrymore uh, with some pubic hair. Well, you that's that's that. Oh my goodness, that's that's a actually of... a nice body though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, spinoffs. So in Cheech and Chong's still smoking, um, Cheech does a bit. Uh, where he's E.T., the extra testicle. And I just discovered, I didn't know this, but in 1985, just three short years later, Ron Jeremy did E3, 
the extra testicle. So I I don't think spinoff means what you think it means. Yeah, these are spinoffs. They were spinoffs. Spinoffs of the movie. That's right. They were. Yeah, they're accredited. Yeah, they spinned off all over. Yeah. yeah. You can see it. All of that shit. All over her face. All over it. Just big old hairy fat Ron Jeremy just spinning off everywhere. So E.T. was supposed to be a plant. Did you yeah, know like he's plant based. He's not boy or girl. And Drew Barrymore asks, you know, she's like, is it a boy or girl? And he just matter of factly goes, it's a boy. He just fucking says it's a boy. You yeah. know? Oh, like the, he yeah. already knows. Well, if it wasn't a boy, then it would be E T T E, wouldn't it? When you make something like The Bachelor and The Bachelor Oh no. Oh, oh, right. no really? oh no. Oh right. no. Oh no. Oh my god. So one thing that Casey didn't remember that I remembered but I don't think I put it together as quickly in well, the movie was the fact that that you know I had remembered obviously the the drunk scene and and obviously when he's scared at the end that there so two things that I did remember that are very important are the flower when, when he drops the the milk when ET is spooked by what the dog right and and Elliot drops the milk. As a kid, I remember thinking. Until this watch, I remember thinking, "Oh, it was just the noise of of that." You know, it didn't really. It wasn't that I didn't put it together. They were already going there. And then I also didn't remember that at the end that ET detaches himself from him. Right. And they actually acknowledge it like that. They're like, "He's now detached himself from the boy." I remember all that. See, distinctly. I don't remember that. The only part I remember was that they were both sick and looking all white mm-hmm. for, for Rose Little. And that was it. I don't remember the drunk scene. I don't remember the kiss and the girl scene, which was amazing. I yeah, I like that. that. Uh, I, I don't really understand the significance of it. I don't. I mean, I mean maybe just it just makes it more of a closer it, bond. Yeah, they were just making it obvious that they were connected. That that he hit the life forces were connected together. Right. And because it was he was losing. But that's something that ET did. Uh, you know what? To to have no because some, because his. He was communicating. No, I don't think it was that at all. I think it was because his people went away, and yeah. they all life force each other. Oh. And so he didn't have that, and so he had to connect with somebody else. So he connects. So that's so when yeah, they came that back. Makes sense. Yes. So when he disconnected from Elliot. Then he died. He, he's dying. Yes. Or yeah. Di- he died Dies. or dying. Yeah. And then. They're coming back, and so that's what them but being close by he just brought gets him, him back to life. He was, yeah, I think it because just must I think have been that it just... had to have been a communication deal. Like he needed to go home, and it was dire. You know, like that's the thing. Like this is what's happening to me now. You understand? Nope. This is what I need to do. No, I, I get what you're saying, but I do think Rich is right. I think that's a byproduct. Yeah, probably. I, I, I don't think it's. I, I think he's right. I think because the thing was is like when the when his when the the yeah, other the alien wasn't glowing till he came. They came when, back. Well, when he calls out for him and he's in the woods, he fucks him because he's right. just you know it makes he his what? heart it that makes his heart glow. So then we get to see him run, right? You know, and so I get that. You know that 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 and that makes sense. And then it also that so that makes it even more poignant that. When he's leaving, it hurts his heart. So he says, right. "Ouch!" Right? You know, and it because it's it it hurts your heart when people leave. Man, I don't like that. You're gonna cry right now, aren't you? Before I tell you the things that broke <laughs> yeah, me up, see. before I tell you the things that broke me up in the movie, though, I do. I I gotta know just because I feel like you know we're sort of there on the movie itself as talking about it. But so, Rich, the hater of all things good. You watch this movie at 43. How'd it go? I didn't cry because I was multitasking when I watched it. I wasn't sitting at the couch undistracted. I definitely would have cried. Did you watch it three times? It, no, I didn't. I didn't. I watched it. Your podcast. What were you family. masturbating or something? Like, no, I was you... watching. I guess I watched it twice this time. Just because this what was. What do you all... mean multitasking though? Like, what were you doing? You playing yeah. with yourself? No, no, no. I was doing coke. We were trying to cram this into were two you weeks. Interesting complimentary colors, like I told you. We. I watched this the same time I watched. <laughs> no, we were trying to cram two um, podcasts in one week. Yeah. So I was doing a Christmas story, and I was doing this okay, one because and we, we were, thought we were going to do yeah. it yeah. back to back, right. and so that's why I was really trying to to get this one in the can quickly. Right. So I was doing the clips at the same time I was watching it. So I was I was watching it and taking clips, watching it. And taking so you clips. didn't cry. So I didn't cry. Okay, but I every other time I've ever seen it, even as an adult, because I remember crying as an adult, because I remember going. Damn, this still gets me. Yeah, I, um, and this was back in my, probably my first marriage when I watched it. Um, probably with my 
my my kids. So at some yeah. point, I can't remember exactly, but I mean, it gets me. That's a it's a big one. It is. Uh, it got me three times. It got me where Drew Barrymore says, "Is he gonna die?" And then that I just lost it right there. I tried to hold hold it together a little bit, and then there's the you know then him actually dying. And when Elliot says we're dying, and as a yeah, mom, it, it's that mom. looking at each other, and then he and then he lets him live, and uh, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. The one that gets me, this is the one that got me because I remember as an adult this getting me. It's the when the flower goes back up. Yeah, yes. That's yeah. when I started. Yeah. That's when I lost. That's it a good as an one. Adult. But I, I don't think there's anything to me. I'll be right. Here, when he says that, that t- that just gave me the chills. Like, that's yo, Adrian, I did it right there. Right. That's it. Like, yeah. that is just. I, that didn't get me. It was, it was the flower one. I remember distinctly re- the flower coming back to life. Yeah, that makes you feel good. It got me all choked up. <laughs> How many times do you think you've heard in your lifetime E.T. phone home? Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, kidding? Ten thousand. Well, well was it, was it not an AT and T commercial or something? I, for a while? He did do like a commercial thing for for a phone company that oh, I remember. He did. I like that. And <laughs> what's that? The plant he, guy. The plant did. So, what do you think about the practical effects of ET? The you know the the look of ET. I remember just finding out that it was a Muppet. Right. Right, because it is. Isn't well, it a Muppet? It's like a Jim Henson. I'm thing sure they have set like like I'm sure parts of it is just a Muppet, and then the other one, like I said, the walking one actually is a dude inside there. Right, and that's just a, a static. But yeah, I mean, ob- obviously they have people animating the eyes and the mouth and all that stuff in, in, in a Muppet form. Okay, so I think obviously <laughs> if they remade ET, which I think they actually should. do. No, I disagree. I know you oh, always disagree. You don't, I don't have to want, say it. We know uh, okay. you don't like. Well, remakes. no, this is it, my name is on this show, and I fucking hate. <laughs> remakes i hate them i think they should do a remake and when they do a remake it's gonna be cg it's gonna be all cg there's gonna be no practical et effects which i think is fine because you know what i think they could get away with it now 10 years ago that would have looked like crap the cg would have looked fake and and you know i think it would have been not good in 82 i think the effects on this movie were Amazing. I agree. I think it's excellent. I don't think there's I anything. Think ET looks up for eighty two. E. T. Mm-hmm. looks amazing. The I whole thing works. Some of works. the effects with just like the like the spaceship and yep. the laser were that, better. That than was Star Close War. Encounters. Those that, were those that were was better all... than Star Wars. It was a little great. Bit. I mean, no, I, well, it should be better. Star Wars. It was it was eighty two versus yeah. seventy seven. No, four years later. Four yeah. years later. Five okay. years. Whatever. But the but, thing. But I, it, here's the thing. I just don't feel like that they. That I think everything they tried to do, they nailed. Yeah. As far as special effect, they didn't bite off more than they could chew, right. so to speak. Yep. yep. So they kept it real, and they yep. they did within the realm of what could be accomplished, and anything that they probably couldn't accomplish, they fucking got. It would have been nice if they had figured out a way to make the speed line up a little better. Like when he was not going fast, he was going a little bit faster than he was, and when he was going fast, he was going a little slower than he was. Yeah, <laughs> but, it's a good. I mean, there there are definitely. You know, I mean, there are definitely times when you see him moving where it's just like, you know, that it just looks like he's going to fall over at right. any time. You know? <laughs> it's it's like, like, dude, do you need help? And it's obvious some motherfucker is walking on his hands right now. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> This drove me crazy. The whole fucking dissecting a frog in this manner was ridiculous. This is not how it works. <laughs> they're not alive. No, they're you not alive. The you don't kill the frog. <laughs> they don't just pass around chloroform in school. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. If you fucking, do you know what they, you know what we would have done? If you know what we would have done with a fucking cotton ball of chloroform when I was in eighth grade? I mean, you I'm, girls I'm, I'm in the t- closet. No, I'm telling you, there'd have been oh. fuck. There'd have been football coaches dressed as cheerleaders, motherfuckers. That would have vaping. Is that, that what it we is? would have not been? There would have been no rape, but it would have been hilarity. 
gone wild and and fucking craziness but that that it drove me nuts and and so the thing was as he even says and is there's there may be some blood or whatever no th- that frog just died there's gonna be a shitload of blood and their guts aren't fucking whatever the yeah, hell they, 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 they not, put them in formaldehyde they're first not processed we get them. i right. still remember the formaldehyde the stench smell. you can't get it off your hands it's right. worse than mustard and poop <laughs> fucking worse. You want to hear? You want to hear like a creepy Marilyn Manson kid thing that I did? No, no, no. Do we? I don't know. <laughs> you tell us. So me and my friends took the teeth out of the frogs. What? They look like little people teeth. It's fucking crazy. Why would you do? Put that? them in little things. Wore them in a necklace for like a week. Thought it was cool. Who even thinks to do that? Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. You know Macabre that. is the word. Why? Who cares? They're just gonna throw it away anyway. We got to see the insides. There's a liver. No, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I, I, you know, I don't know. The whole fucking dissecting of animals seems silly. Now. See, looks old enough to do that. I think I did that in eighth. We no, did do it. Ninth grade. We did it in junior. But they do it even younger now. I mean, Can I, I tell you something. I think Emma. Emma is uh, thirteen, 13. and she's. They've dissected a few things. I. Mm. I don't know anything about the human insides because of frogs. Yeah. Like the internet has all that shit. Well, we didn't have the internet. I just saw the inside of Drew Barrymore's vagina. We didn't have the internet back then. Yeah, you think that's the inside of her vagina. We had the the dark. You would have to ask Tom Green, fucking match it up. (laughs) Have you seen this vagina? Have you seen this vagina? Have you seen the inside of this vagina? Anywho, that scene fucking drove me crazy. Um You know, I don't really understand You know who that girl is, right? She's somebody, right? She's from Baywatch. Yeah. Okay. Um, she, she wasn't Nikki Six's girlfriend, was she? She might have been Nikki Six's girlfriend. I can't remember because she dated somebody from Baywatch. I think yeah. it might have been her. But she, ah, oh, man, I had the fucking hots for that girl. She didn't do from shit, this movie from shit, but yeah, she, oh yeah, she was yeah. super hot to me. How old were y'all when this came out? Uh, I was ten. So I was ten. Are you all the same age? Yeah. There's a difference. Okay. No. He's three months younger than me. Or okay, something. got it. Four months. That's not relevant. I'm just curious. Just yeah, for understanding purposes. Yeah. He's younger. My penis is bigger. I think that's... Well, that's fucking probably obvious. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, you know, I mean, fuck. You got to have something, Rich. <laughs> You know? I know, right? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the throwing me the bone. You're welcome. Oh, fun. Now that we got Rich's penis out of the way. I did think it was weird that he's watching the um, the the old movie where he's like flinging her in and pulling in her and kissing. And then he flings yeah. her and pulls her in and kisses her. Why? It wasn't yeah. relevant, but I loved it. It yeah. was a cool scene, And her I guess, little yeah. toe turn. How cute little yeah. kid. You know, I, the thing is, is that, that obviously they took some liberties here. I like that scene, too. I, I, I think... Freeing the frogs was fucking great. I love the little girl who's just like up on the chair with one on each hand, and she's just completely frozen. Just fucking hell. that. That's just greatness. And and you know, I they love- can't. There's no way that they can say that that no animals were harmed in the making because. They weren't even paying attention oh, to no. where their feet were, and there were frogs hopping all, all over, over the, the place. place. They were getting stomped he, on. I, they had to have stomped 100%. on. Wait, did they try yeah. to say no animals were harmed? No, I'm no, saying you, you have to do I that I don't now. think you have to say it when they're like frogs or fish and shit. I don't know. You have know? you seen PETA? That's... They're uh, pretty I've had a pita before. It was it. delicious at this Mediterranean pl- Have place. Have you had a pita pit? Well, there's this Mediterranean place down the street. I and like it the Giro better delicious. than the Giro. The, 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 the Giro. The Giro. The Giro. Oh, the, Giro. Oh. the Giro. The Giro. The Giro. Well, it's spelled with a G. Huh. Like I called and, it a gyro for a long time, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't do Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, for those uh, listening in the UK, we're talking about kebabs right now. Is that what they're called? They're called a kebab. Don air. A and, and in, a Canada, kebab? in Canada, they're Don airs. You are so worldly. My name's Jared. I've been places. <laughs> you said be good. And banjo. Good. Okay, I'll be right down. Thank you. Gertie, oh. I have to go pick up Elliot. Will you be a good girl and stop? Mommy, he can talk. So, A. You, you know why this I got kid, this clip. Yeah, this kid, you're going to leave this fucking kid that can't even get in the car by herself home? Be a good girl? 
You know that I think that that was commonplace back then. You, you probably right. I think. I mean, I definitely remember being pretty small and my mom leaving me to like just run up to the store. Right, real man. Quick. Most of my childhood, like I think back on it, and all I can think is like, where the fuck was my mom? Like, yeah, this stuck out to me as being uh, one of those things where you know that it, it definitely entered into my thinking of like, why the fuck are you leaving her at home? But I, I, the blocking in this scene is genius. How, you know, yeah. they're, 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 he's he's going one way, she's going the other, she's the looking this way. Yeah, and, it, and, it, <laughs> and you know, then the refrigerator hits him in the face, he falls over, she doesn't see him. Just fucking That's funny. That's oblivious. It was great. One track, like, mind mom, who's single, has three kids now, trying to get shit Just done. trying to get the fucking, doesn't the even groceries care. You have a friend up over and the bathtub. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And you're half listening. Well, we were all the time. It's safer to leave your kids at home than to get them in a car and take them with you because more people die in car accidents than they do just doing stuff at the house. You know, if you, you turn on the TV, hey, watch this, I'll be right back. That actually is safer. That doesn't sound right. We can't do that because that sounds terrible. You leaving your kid alone at the age of, you know, seven or whatever. Let's just fucking do this. We're just going to have <laughs> you and Tim Tool raise everybody's kids. <laughs> And that, Good luck, guys. if you if you so what episode is he on in case somebody I'm wants to read his no, do it's, that. apparently it's okay Christmas to swear story. in front of them you fucking just leave them at home by themselves now <laughs> yeah he's a Christmas full story. thing you know what just fucking let him cook dinner from now on he's, it's, actually Everett's I'm three. gonna give you this one we'll just fucking let Everett cook I was, he's three. I was allowed to use the stove and the oven well before Jarrett allows his children to use the stove in the oven oh uh, for sure and so, I said stove and oven no oven. and so was I. I I was as well but there was definitely a different need it's for it. A different time of ovens. It's a different it, time of necessity and need, and also just the 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 way things are prepared. We didn't have fucking microwave mac and cheese back then. We didn't. Well, yeah, we like also would, didn't have required seatbelts. So there's that's that. true. I mean, we, me and my mom just talked about this on and we my, got rid of on the my fucking stage. Munchie, all we didn't need last week. You know where? I mean, I stood in the seat in the front oh, seat. No. That's no, where I rode. I distinctly remember my mom driving the orange Ram Charger that we had. She was driving. I was sitting on the console backwards in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Eating Triscuits. She was looking at me eating Triscuits and she swerved into the oncoming traffic and almost ran a car off the road. Yeah. Happens. And slammed on the brakes. And then, you know, because she was all worried about me sitting there eating Triscuits on the console backwards. Right. Oh yeah. my God. We would never. I mean, that can't. You'd be thrown in jail if you yeah. did that. Today. I'm a seatbelt kid. Uh, always have been. I was a car really? seat kid. Yeah. Oh, huh? uh, well, you're younger. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite a bit. <laughs> but I was allowed to use the stove and the oven. I could scramble eggs and I was just super young. I mean, with my parents I around. I used the microwave. I made bagels and I made muffins in the microwave and I put cream cheese. Everybody is, is uh, again, what I what I tell my kid, if we're talking about like what I allow my kids to do in the kitchen no, versus like what I was allowed to do, it's night and day. But it's also night and day as to what they're allowed to do outside um, compared to what I was allowed to do yeah. outside. Like what? It, I mean, my we we've talked about this before. I left in the morning at yeah. between seven thirty and eight. Don't come back. And I had to be home by dark. Man, right. I will say that, that was it. One thing that you do is that you. Like, Jack gets home, he gets on his bike, and he goes. There's parents that don't even understand that anymore. Jack's fine. He stays on the streets. He knows he's allowed to stay on. He, he knows where home. he's supposed to go. He, he contacts us everywhere he's at. He had mm -hmm. a little walkie-talkie for a while. And, like, I talk to, like, clients all the time about that, about how our kids are, like, you know, he's a outside kid. He likes to just go. And, like, mm -hmm. everyone's like, that's cool, but. But there shouldn't even be a but anymore. I just think it's funny that the times have changed. And really, the circumstances haven't. Yeah, I, you're right, he and we've talked get, about. He could still get snatched up. Well, but he here's could, the thing: the, the the deal is though, is that and, and me and my again, me and my mom were talking about this the other day. The funny thing is, is that like those kind of crimes are are ever decreasing, and but, but we're the, but, we're, but the, the, the media, media, shows, media shows, shows it to shows, us yeah. constantly. Yeah. So right. it appears to be a more dangerous world than we live in. But right. Jesus but it's Christ. Not. It's right. way no, monitor. The There's fucking, cameras but everywhere. But it's the fact that you, you know wanna, it could happen that you're a terrible parent. And we talk for about like, you talk about there. drug abuse and things like that, yeah. dude. You, the fucking seventies were insane. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> used to hear like the everyone second, was high. The second some kid got snatched up in Utah, you didn't used to freaking know in five right. seconds. Right. Yeah. And that's right. the thing. So like, Amber I am alert. super, super great. Like I said, I know it's funny. Like my mom. Like I literally am. Like where the fuck was my mom when I was running all over the place? 
But, like, I'm grateful for this childhood where I ran around and we had these things, we had these adventures, and we did cops and robbers, and then now kids can't do that, and I feel like our yeah. kids can't Well, I think that leads into that th- th- this one, even more than Goonies, reminded me of me and my brother and our friends and our little, what we, you know, our our little gangs in, in our little neighborhood. But, <laughs> th- so how they knew all these trails and these cutoffs to, like, lose right. the, dude, um, that was, that's that reality. Kind of been, you know, I fucking Knew, I mean, I knew how to get places so fast, and there were certain backyards mm-hmm. that we knew we could cut through. Right. There were certain ones of them that you knew if you got caught, the guy was going to be pissed, <laughs> had chased after you, and right. it was thick grass, so you had to do the like sideways pedal thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where you're, like, your forth, handlebars are going back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> and I mean, that is, that's how kids haul ass on a bike. <laughs> You know, or yeah. that fucking handlebars are just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But man, so I, th- it's very, very reminiscent. Can you say E.T.? E.T. 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 Love that laugh. Yeah. Be good. I taught him that too. You should give him his dignity. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> phone. Phone? He said phone? He said phone? Can't you understand English? He said phone. Home. E.T. Home. Phone. Fucking never knew that he said it backwards there. I remember that. E.T. I didn't phone. If E.T. I thought home I had phone. It, I, I thought I was hearing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I never knew that until that. until yesterday. And then, uh, wow, that's crazy. And then This he, is one he, of those things where, like, because y'all saw it when it came out, it's like uh, Star Wars. Like, I knew, Luke, I am your father before I ever saw it. Right. So I knew E.T. phone home before I saw this movie. So when I saw it for the first time, when he said home phone, I'm like, that's not right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, that's that's interesting. You could be happy here. I could take care of you. I wouldn't let anybody hurt you. We could grow up together, E.T. Yeah, not so much. Because here's what I started thinking. Where does this thing shit and piss? Because it, it, he it, he's a to. plant. He's a plant. What? So he just does all that stuff internally. I don't know. He eats all the food. Then, then that means nowhere. he's also going to fucking reproduce on his own. Then you're going to have two of these fucks to take care no, of. No, he ate. Now he we're eats, getting real. He eats food. He's got to go somewhere. Right. It's got to go somewhere. That means if and he, he doesn't drink beer, he if, broke the listen seal to early. Me very carefully. If he doesn't walk while he does that, he has it all over him. And he will drag that all through the house. Look, we could do this all day long. Let's just say he shits. They didn't show it because it wasn't integral to the story plot. I am fine with that. Maybe in the remake they'll show it. Here's the thing. If you would have brought up the shit thing, you'd still be going on it. I'm just okay to move on. But if that was your fucking big goddamn conspiracy theory with the, well, they didn't make it to where the alien could shit, this movie doesn't make any fucking sense, I hate it, then we'd still be talking about it right now. We would. Even though we still are. Right But now. that's not my fucking point. <laughs> the point is, is they didn't leave him a way to poop. You know why this pisses me off? Why? Because one tiny clip before this, she's like, oh, yeah, I guess he was doing this. Her son's been missing all night, and then he shows up, and she loses her shit. Right. The hard part about that is is sort of the way that he would camp out in the backyard and things like that. I mean, obvious, but you're right. I mean, he was. this is the night he didn't come home from Halloween, right? Yeah. They'd right. be a goddamn APB out for this yeah, guy. Yeah, and also, if you're the brother, I'm sorry, like, I feel like no matter what the situation, I'd be like, dude, he said he was going to the woods or hinting or something. Yeah, I'm sure. just sitting there going, yeah. I don't know, hope he's not in or, fucking outer space Mom, now. I'm dead. I know what's going on. I'll go get him. It'll be fine. Exactly. Because yeah. he knows he's fine. He's doing what he's doing. But he didn't know that. He knew he was out there waiting for a spaceship. God knows what happens. He could have said, "Yeah, but he still. said he was going to the woods okay. with a friend. Well, then <laughs> two options. Fess up. Tell her the whole thing because shit's just got real. He's gone, and I know an alien spacecraft might be taking him away. Or two, cover for him because you know he's okay, and you yeah. go out there and say, I know where to look for him. I'll find him. I'll be right back, Mom. And I he, think he more than anything. Get the boys and let's go. It bothered me even, I, I guess, really on that one. I'm just, you know, it was just a, it was a looser sort of hovering parenting back then. I mean, you know, 
Right. Maybe it was just like, maybe the brother was like, hey, he's going to be home, whatever. I don't really understand why E.T. ends up down by the river laying there, like about to get eaten by a fucking raccoon. Like, why did he wander down there in the first place? I don't know. And it doesn't make any sense to me. That's, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, we're going to move on because I fucking brought something else up. <laughs> I see. All right. Well, let's move on then. I thought you wanted me to. Elliot, he came to me too. I've been wishing for this since I was 10 years old. I don't want him to die. What can we do that we're not already doing? He needs to go home. He's calling his people. And I don't know where they are. He needs to go home. Elliot, I don't think that he was left here intentionally. But his being here is a miracle, Elliot. It's a miracle. And you did the best that anybody could do. I'm glad he met you first. I just love how Elliot settled the argument that we were having in the Star Wars episode okay. about talking and breathing at the same at time. At the same time, yeah. Because <laughs> he was obviously... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He was breathing in and breathing out. <laughs> it's the did we talk about inward singing <laughs> no. with Tenacious D? And no. he just, he invents inward singing so he never has to stop again. Right. So he he's just like I am singing right now and I'm never gonna fucking stop it singing again. I'm never gonna stop it. and you can't fucking stop it because we are fucking singing. Yeah. <laughs> you were doing that, but we didn't talk about where that. Yeah, came that's from. a Tenacious D bit. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously that is possible because Elliot just did. He just fucking did it. Stay. Creature's pressure is bottoming out. His complexes are slow and widening. How's the boy? He's converting back to normal sinus rhythm. They're separating. Yes, boy definitely separating. separating. What does that mean? The boy's coming back. We're losing the teeth. I like that. I, so there on that dialogue, it sort of explains. Who, who's the it. idiot in the background that's like, what does, what that, does that mean? mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I bet you that was Dude, added later. Up. But I mean, I, no, because that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, again, I, I, don't, I don't remember that. For as many times as I'd seen this, I don't remember that E.T. had control over whether or not they were, you know, uh, attached, so to speak. I know. If it, yeah. He's just the only guy. Yeah, who's the whole a, what's thing. that mean? What does that mean? I don't understand. It means the boys. The boys coming back. Obviously, to us. he's an administrator. And, th and then she calls him ET. So he's the, everybody's caught onto his name. <laughs> right. You know, what I think about sometimes though is like, you know, how when you're an adult and. You're almost always in control of your shit. You know, very seldom are Hopefully. you. Very seldom are you. Some you know, unless you're in prison or some shit. Some you know adults. I mean? No, but you know what? That's not what I mean. I don't mean like out of control, as in like your behaviors. But you're you're in control of your. You make decisions. You know all, the, and then and you you have control over what's gonna you know what those decisions are gonna be. Sure. Now you have to deal with the repercussions. Or whatever. It's it's funny to. You know, it, it sucks to like think about being him, Elliot, and not have any control, you know, and he used to have all the control, he used to have, you know, all control of this little guy. And now he's just like, you guys are killing him. And he, he, you can't physically, it's almost like fucking court. I was just going to say, you know, it's, you can't relate to being out of control, I, being divorced and having to go through child custody. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's the that's the most you can't. Oh, just, my God. You can't just say that's the most right. frustrating thing about yes. any, of, any of that is just not being able to, you know, I, I just feel like everybody should fucking sit down in a room right. and you should just fucking and say everyone all should the make shit. sense. Yeah. And if you say something that's bull crap, it should be able to everyone go, no, that's no, not that's not that's, right. That's, that's yeah. not right. But that so doesn't are, happen. It doesn't. And so again, there's there's few times where you just feel that just sense of, of just not being it's like I have no fucking control over this situation. Yeah. It's like, you know, like if you you know, for for most human beings, if you know if you can't make rent in a month, you can fucking figure it out. You know, at <laughs> least you should be. Yeah, but there are people who get, can't. You know, and then they don't, or don't have a house to live in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or can't. Or don't. Or can't. Whatever. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not making my point. The point is, 
I hate the idea of just not of being out of control. Right. You know, it's like and not in a, like a possessive control. Not at all. Right no, I just it's, not it's being a, able to fucking like not get, being able to work hard and 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 do the due diligence and have something have a positive effect. Not in in this case. What I mean is is like just being able to fucking stop everyone in the room and have them look at you and you just fucking tell them, "Hey, I can feel this. You are killing him. He's going to right, die." Right. As you said earlier. Right. You know, but you can't do that because they're all off doing their own shit and it's just like the fucking snowball is going down the hill, exactly. so to speak. Do you love you? I love you, E.T. Yeah, I love you, E.T. Did you cry? I did. Yeah, this 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 is one of the three. E.T. phone home. See that music? Holy shit. Yeah, it's great. It feels good. So good. It feels it's amazing. Really, 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 really good. I and he says, Fawn Home, right. Wars, yeah. I am E.T. Home. 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 E.T. Fawn home. 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 And all of a sudden he's like. <laughs> yeah, he's just fucking back. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So at this point, he's pretending oh, that, was that he's awesome. dead yeah. when he's okay. no, he's alive. They're all trying to cart him no, out. That was cool. Wait a minute. We didn't talk about the most fucking insane thing that happens in this movie. The one I, I think this is the one thing that I when I saw it yesterday, I literally thought to myself, this th- that's completely fucked up. They got that completely wrong. When they go to the door and realize that the people that are there, a guy walks in in a fucking NASA a suit, space suit straight from oh, the yeah. moon. <laughs> from the moon. And not only that, then there's guys trying to come in the back window like zombies, and they're yeah, like dressed zo- up like they're on the moon, too. It's like <laughs> the moon people are taking... I, and I actually sit there and thought it would have yeah, been funny if that not- was like Michael's friends, and they're all dressed up in their Halloween costumes yeah, or something. Yeah, why would they not guard the windows, walk through the front door, say, hey, can I have your alien? Like, that'd yeah. be it. I remember the people in like the hazmat suits. What's so fucked up about that is that like people come down the road, they're wearing their suits, but like anybody that's like a in the military, apparently didn't need they one. They don't need them. No, doesn't even matter because you fucking. <laughs> no, and then the, 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 but they and then the kids just have free reign of the house, even though it's all under quarantine and shit. I did like the fact that they had established that the brother could only back the car out of the driveway, and so when it comes time <laughs> to drive the van, he's like, I "I've never driven it. forward." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Did your mom let you drive out of the driveway? Uh, on occasion, I think I just did it. You know, I mean, I don't think it was like a thing. My, My aunt, mom, she's right. never really been like the like laid back, I'll let you, but she did. She'd let me like back out of the driveway a little bit or Dennis would or yeah. something. But We definitely did the Britney Spears. I would sit in my dad's lap and and we and he would let us drive the did car. Did Britney Spears do that? Yeah, she got she got in trouble for it. That's where the the quote, I'm country. That that's where that came from. My aunt had this old Camaro and she would tell me to go out and and warm up the car. Um because I guess, you know, when it was cold, it didn't start. So while she was getting ready, she'd tell me, to, here's the keys, go warm up the car. I'd never gotten in the I didn't know anything about cars. I could turn it, and then that's it. And so she said, you, you're going to have to step on the gas so it doesn't stall um, a few times. And so I get in the car, and I'm turning, and I'm going, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for like five minutes straight yeah, sure and she comes running out yeah. no it stops yeah. <laughs> cause yeah. I just suck it all over gas <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing that's awesome <laughs> and you'd woken the entire neighborhood right, exactly. in, this, in the process my dad um, his family lives out in Dial, Texas and my uncle has that's where they make soap he's a crop duster Wait. not in the same way that Jarrett is are you saying Dale, um, Texas or Dial? Dial Oh, I thought you were saying Dale with a country accent. No, Dial, Texas. And so my uncle is a crop duster, not like Jarrett. Again, that's the second time you've done that joke today. I that's know. Crazy. I don't know which way he's doing it. No, leave anyway, it in there both times. So <laughs> we had this like big like landing strip, and we would. Jared likes landing strips. No, I don't. Too. No, he I likes like full bush. I like full bush. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's what we used to like learn how to drive on. We go back and forth the same way. My dad would let me drive back and forth. On this runway, essentially, 
And then he'd be like, okay, let's go on the street. But it wasn't like going on the street in the city where you're like, okay, I'm on the road. It was like, sharp turn, ditch. Like that was the whole entire thing. And that's my story. I don't know what the boy was For the record, nothing. Absolutely bare nothing. You like it just completely bald. Like, yeah, why? Like 12 year old. Why do you want stuff in the way? No, I I get the allure of the full bush because that's that's a weird. I get that part of it. It's womanly. It's. Well, it's, it's. it's seventies. It's porn. it has this weird. No, it's not seventies. I don't. Porn. I can't it's explain like, why. There's a natural. I went through a phase it. where I was like, man, I wish I could date a woman with just a full bush. I, I thought that that was kind of hot That's in a, some way, but I, when I come back to reality, like four seconds later, all gone, just clean, just out of there. like baby's bottom, clean, mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. So back yeah. to the baby's bottom again. Well. So it's a baby ass. Yeah, so you're, you're into fucking a baby ass. You're into I'm young, sorry. Young I baby revoke ass. that. I'm so sorry I said yeah, that. That's <laughs> disgusting, Casey. I can't even help it. You'd be fucking Can ashamed you take of yourself. No, I'm putting that one. God, please. You'd be ashamed of yourself. I didn't even mean to. Ouch. I think the great thing that another great thing that this movie brought us was um, anytime anybody would cut their finger, we would just be like, ouch. (laughs) Ouch. Ouch. And then, uh, you know, and that would that would last until the Karate Kid. (laughs) And then we would do the fucking Mr. Miyagi bullshit. No, I, I absolutely when you not until you just said that. Yeah. Did I remember doing that all the time? Sure. Anytime anybody would get hurt is ouch. No, I didn't do that. Ouch. Oh, all the time. Remember yeah. that? Like I was just like just flooding memories in of me doing ouch. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> I'll be right here. Why don't you cry about it? Uh, I did. Yeah, I did <laughs> cry during that part. It was touching, and I, I like the fact that. He, you know, he he had told him, I'll be right here, I'll be right here, when he's leaving him in his room, and he said it, you know, again, in the hospital beds and, and that. So, you know, that was something that stuck with E.T., and and I think, you know, him letting him know that he would be right there. It definitely was a touching moment, for sure. It was. All in all, great movie. I thought it was an awesome watch, um, even... As an adult, I mean, it was cool to watch it with Jack. You know, it, it uh, the thing that I noticed about it as well is he didn't ask a lot of questions. So I think the movie's done so well, you know, that it, you know, that kids kind of understand it as yeah. it goes. And and that's it, that's not really every movie. I mean, he's he's a question asker from way back. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is Jarrett goes to the movies. We have uh, been talking about ET. It's been a blast. Yep. Um, if you are digging. The podcast. We're actually asking for your support. You can go to www.patreon, p a t r e o n dot com, and search Jarrett goes to the movies, and uh, you can be a supporter. With that, you get a pre-show, you can get a post-show, and you get you can get a bunch of outtakes. The outtakes are for the three dollar a month um, supporters. Okay. The um, with the five dollar a month, you get the outtakes plus you get the pre-show and the post show. Yeah, and then for ten, we're gonna do um, we do a Google Hangout or two or three a month. Right. And uh, and then it goes on up for there. We're not, you know, this podcast is always gonna be free. I want to make that perfectly clear, but um, we do have some pretty amazing ideas for what we want this podcast to be. So. If you guys are down and you want some more content. So check us out at uh, JarrettGoesToTheMovies.com. Or you can see us on Facebook at JarrettGoesToTheMovies. Um, and then Twitter is JarrettMovies. Dating um, the podcast a little bit. Uh, it is the first week of 2016. And in four weeks, uh, Bowling for Soup will be heading to the UK. We haven't been there in two and a half years. Um, there are a few tickets available to a few shows. So if you're down, this would be the time to get them. And uh, I think that's about all I've got to plug. Follow me on Twitter at J A R E T two one one three. Same in, on Instagram. You can also follow Rich at Rich underscore Coleman. And you can follow Casey if you would like, but she's not going anywhere, so there's no reason to follow her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Let's just cut that part. Um, do we didn't forget anything, do we? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Thanks again for listening, you guys. And uh, man, it's always a fun. Oh, 
Thanks again for listening, you guys. It's always fun, and uh, it's great to be back. Welcome home, Rich, and uh, everybody else. We'll see you down the road. See you.